Welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 5.1 and we're looking at literacy and numeracy. Now, I'm going to go over some different uh, mathematics and numeracy programs. I'm going to go over some English and literacy programs and go over a Google Advanced Search. That will be our workshop uh, um, tool use uh, part for the, for the session. But first of all, I want to talk about um, how to basically ICT integration. So really thinking about how ICT is supporting our, our is supporting literacy and numeracy. Now fundamentally, education is about the three R's: reading, writing, and arithmetic, uh, which I find amusing because only one starts with R. But it's that's the the real basis of education. Now originally we had, were question rich and answer poor. Uh, question rich and answer poor. Whereas now we're answer rich and question poor. And what I mean by this is many years ago, students would come to school, they'd sit in the classroom with the teacher, and if they want to know anything, they had to ask the teacher. They could go and look it up in the textbook, they could go to the library and use a catalogue uh, to try and find a book that they needed. But pretty much, if they had a question, the only way they could find out their answer was to go to the teacher. So that's the point of question rich and answer poor. Nowadays, they are answer rich. They have every single bit of information at their fingertips. However, the hard part is finding out the question they want rather than actually getting the answers. So if you're a teacher in a classroom and you are doing, I don't know, Romeo and Juliet, and you ask a question about Romeo and Juliet, the students can look it up on their phones, on their computers, on the laptops, uh, on their what, iPads, whatever they are. They can look up the answer within seconds. All right. If a student has a question that they want answered, they can go to YouTube and find out the answer. However, there's so many, they, they put in uh, Romeo and Juliet and I come up with 3.5 billion websites. So the, the problem is the students have just got all this information, but they're just, and they can try and take in as much as they want, but there's just too much information out there. So they ha have a lot of trouble trying to answer, like trying to find the question they want answered. So one of the best, one of the things about teachers, it doesn't matter whether you're a young teacher or an old teacher or a uh, want to use technology, don't want to use technology, teachers are very, very good at getting students to jump through hoops. Whether you're using no technology at all and saying, right, I want you to do these th different things um, uh, and plan out your lessons. Or whether you're using lots and lots of technology and you're going from, from program to program. Regardless, the teachers are the ones that drive the, that know the hoops that they want the students to, to jump through. So if you're doing, running a flipped classroom where you've given them all the, all the curriculum material, you have planned it in such a way that, that you know that the students are going to learn um, the content that you want to cover. Right? We don't have to actually deliver the content anymore. We can, uh, there, there are companies that are spending millions of dollars or hundreds of, of hours making a brilliant video for the students to watch. So why are we going to all the effort of delivering the content ourselves when we can say, here's the video, I want you guys to consume this video, so to watch this video, whether it's at home or in the class, and then we'll discuss it. As a teacher, you then step back and save a lot of time. So what you would then do is go, well, the piece of information that I want you to learn is this, and um, I then want you to um, answer these questions because you know that you want the students to understand um, play tectonics or um, the how to use grammar appropriately. All right, so we are so teachers are very good at getting students to jump through hoops. Now, I see integration is really great for um, the things we need to think about is digital literacy, special needs, and differentiation. Now, in a uh, digital literacy is obviously knowing how to use a computer. One of the biggest issues we're going to have in the future is sure a student might have trouble with. Um, um, dysgraphia or dyslexia or um, trouble with numbers or whatever. When they're going onto the computer, you may overcome some of these problems, right? Where maybe they have uh, they have trouble reading, so you can make the font size bigger. Maybe they have um, uh, uh, dyslexia, and so you can actually make the background a uh, pink color to make it easier for the students to read. However, there will be a new breed of students which have digital may have digital lex digital lexia so maybe has trouble using a computer right so actually bringing up that will become a new special needs the digital literacy is how to type right how to uh, get onto Google how to uh, save a file how to use email so there's this is basically a new form of 
um, fundamental education that we need to address. As I said with special needs, some students who can't use a computer will find it difficult um, in the future because that's where everything's going to go. It's very rare now for someone to walk into a bank, draw out money. Everyone uses an ATM and even now we don't use ATMs, we just use PayWave. All right. So that's just simple everyday things is going to change. Uh, differentiation, obviously there is ways of differentiate without using technology. You can set different tasks, you can set um, different levels uh, and so on. However, with differentiation and ICT, you could actually uh, have students f complete one task and then have the computer go, right, you've completed this, that task, move on here. Uh, for example, um, I can set a multiple choice question before the lesson. Right? If, uh, for example, at the moment we're learning about atomic structures in science. So I can say, here are, can you name the first uh, 10 elements of the periodic table? Right? So ask them questions. Might give them the, um, what does NA stand for? What does HE stand for? What does CL stand for? And the students have to identify what they all are. Uh, if they get 10, 9 or 10 out of 10, no worries. Seems like they understood the material. Move on to the next section. If they get, um, say, a 7 or 8, you might say, well, you've missed a few. You might need to go back and relearn that. Um, but you can move on to the next section. If you get less than seven, it, the computer can actually say, no, you've got less than seven. Before you move on to the next section, here's uh, just a recap of the material we've covered in class so the students can go through and read it, learn it, consume it. And then they can see another test. Uh, and if they complete that test, you know, get say seven or above, then they move on. So this is a way of actually pushing that um, that one to one education, one to one testing back onto the students and back onto the computers to complete the thing. So differentiation can become a lot easier using technology. So I'm going to the next the next videos uh, are going to be about uh, literacy and numeracy um, and the tools you can use online to help you with that. And then finally, I'm going to talk about. Um, the pedagogy and ICT.